Today's video is brought to you by Indecision. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm June and I like to paint with gouache. In today's video, I'll be painting one of these. Problem is, I don't know which one I want to paint. Let the coin toss decide. This is an Eastern Caribbean $1 coin. This one's a limited print version because of the colored area on the back. Heads, and I'll paint this one. Growth. Tails, and I'll paint this one. Hardy Lily. And it's heads. I did a few thumbnails to see how I might like the lips to look. Do I want them made up and sultry, neutral, with a bit of lip chap, or with a bit of nude colored lipstick? I went with the nude lips as I did not want them too eye-catching or too plain and didn't want them to distract from what I thought was the focal point, which is the water hyacinth blooming at the top. After I finished the painting, though, I realized that my eyes went first to the lips, up the stem, and then to the flower. I imagine that might be so for anyone else looking at the painting. This is a sketch from my daily doodle diary from September of last year. The idea is pretty simple. Speak it into existence, or as the younger generation are saying now, manifest destiny. I recently started an internship to become a pharmacist. It will take six months to complete and requires that I work nights and weekends to complete the necessary 480 hours. The work isn't anything new to me, but as I'm doing this as well as working a full-time job, it has been exhausting. It also cuts into my me time significantly making it difficult to get much painting or editing done. I'm trying to build my channel and my career, and I don't plan on choosing between the two, as I like what I do. So, the easy solution to my problem is to do a bunch of stuff ahead of time and edit them when I have a bit of time to spare. This means I'll have to pick simple subjects that I can paint in one sitting and edit in a few hours. I've gone through my old sketchbooks, my daily doodle diary, and my little book of ideas and picked a few things I think might fit into these categories. I'll show you my selections another time. In March, I go into the second phase of my internship which is done at a hospital pharmacy. I say that like we have more than one hospital on this tiny island. I'm currently doing phase one in a private pharmacy, and in May, phase three takes me to a government pharmacy, which I already work at. This means I'll only have to work during the day and have my nights and weekends free, so I can to do more complex projects then. Don't hold me to that. Back to the painting. As I said before, this sketch is called growth. It is the manifestation of good things from within, by your own effort. This painting made me crazy. I struggled with the lips a lot. I wanted it to have the same painterly look the thumbnail painting had, 
but I was so precious with each stroke and made sure to stay within the lines and keep the whole thing neat. I took a long pause, not seen in this video, and just stared at it. Eventually I said F it. I was gonna relax and enjoy the painting, and if at the end it's not good enough, I can redraw it and try again. And this is good advice when learning to paint or draw, be it traditionally or digitally. Don't be afraid to F up a piece, delete it, and start again. The repetition builds muscle memory. And many of my sketches look better in the second or seventh draft. As you sit there and watch me put like 42 layers of paint on these lips, you're probably wondering, why is she using so many layers? Because I'm using the paint pretty thinly, I like adding layers on top of each other to help give a more three-dimensional look. I drew the lips flat, and now I'm trying to give them the appearance of popping off of the paper instead of just laying down on top of it. I enjoyed painting the inside of the mouth a lot. It reminded me how a few simple haphazardly placed strokes and a bit of dabbling could easily give me the results I wanted. From here on, I painted the teeth and stem with the same mindset and it turned out painterly just as I wanted. I figured if I really hate it, at the end, I'd redo it. And because I had the muscle memory from the first time painting it, it would be better as long as I didn't fall prey to my perfectionism and get too precious with it again. But I'm so frustrated Hello to my loneliness I guess that ignorance is bliss Take me back to before the new Rewind, take it out of cue Innocence can be a young man's game Signed up for the Hall of Shame I wish I knew I realized when I was painting the thumbnails it was a lot easier to paint the inside of the mouth and then paint the teeth over them. That way it looked like the teeth were on top of it and not on the same layer. Also, I didn't get jagged, sharp, rectangular edges from having painted the background or the interior of the mouth over the teeth and then having to repaint it again to round out the edges.
truth is hard to swallow. I think I'll chew it. may concern, using the right tool for a job makes the job a lot easier. Switch the brushes out. I forgot to erase the outline of the water hyacinth and I began to paint over it with a bit of white 
tinted with just a tiny bit of purple. It's beginning to rain. With just a tiny bit of purple. And I thought it would have been opaque enough to cover up the lines after I realized the mistake. But it kept showing through. So I just kept painting over the edges of the flower. The petals just kept getting wider and wider. And then I realized it's not that the pencil lead is showing through the opaque paint. It's that the paint was dissolving the pencil lead and it was mixing in with each brush stroke I made. If I just left it, it looked fine. I was tired by this point, so I just left it. It, it wasn't as noticeable if you were standing a little distance from it. Or you would have thought if I hadn't said anything, that's how it was supposed to be. I learned a lot while painting this. For starters, I like the painterly look more than I like neat, perfect, in the lines, refined painting style. I also like dabs of color just randomly placed in certain areas and I think I'm going to try and use this technique a bit more going forward as I do like the stem and the flower a lot more than I like the lips I do actually love how I painted the lips they are beautiful but so perfect that annoys me just looking at it but I learned a lot and I'm going to try and put a lot of what I learned into practice going forward thank you so very much for watching my video and I'll see you in the next one.